25 minutes of useless information in zombies, let's go. Did you know Treyarch has been lying to you all these years? In Nocturne and Toten in the help room, if you come right up to the Thompson, it'll say it cost 1500 but in actuality, it only costs 1200 That's called false advertising, and that is illegal, but once you do buy it, it does actually tell you the right price, 1200 But for all these years, I've always thought it cost 1500 and never actually looked at my points when I bought it. Also in Nocturne and Toten, you know that you can destroy the barrels, but did you know that you can also destroy the trucks without like igniting any of the barrels? It's one of those things where you know it's a thing, but you never really thought about it until someone told you about it. So you can actually blow up the trucks first and then blow up the barrels if you want to, if you're just feeling a tad bit chaotic. Now this is something that a lot of people might not know about. There is actually a radio transmission talking about Nocturne and Toten. So back in 2009 on Treyarch's official website, there was a radio that said, ever since the second outbreak at Nocturne and Toten, troops have been noticing strange radio transmissions and broadcasts taking place in the dead of the night. I could not for the life of me find a video of this. If you happen to know of one, please let me know. But this was a very well-known thing that Treyarch did have this on their official website back in 2009. And it's kind of interesting to think about that this could have been one of the directions that Treyarch wanted to take zombies, but just never went anywhere with it. Now, Nocturne and Toten is actually from the campaign and multiplayer. In campaign, there is a mission called Hard Landing, and it's pretty easy to tell when you get to Nocturne and Toten. Now there is a music easter egg in Nocturne Toten, and no it's not the Zombie Chronicles ones where you have to shoot all the barrels and stuff like that. If you come to this radio in the help room and you knife it, it'll turn it on and you could swap out between a bunch of different songs, and a lot of them are just some of the soundtracks from Campaign, but it's still pretty nice to know that we had a music easter egg all the way back in Nocturne Toten. It's no Kevin and Elena, but it'll do. Now there was a World at War Zombies app way back in the day in the App Store. I don't think it's even possible to get actually like legitimately anymore. But back in the day, if you play Nocturne Toten on this app, Edward Richthofen would be dying outside of the map and would guide you along on the basics of Call of Duty Zombies. we come right up here to Verruckt and you come to the dentist chair and you hold FX or whatever console you happen to be playing on, you will hear the sound of a dentist drill followed by the sound of terrified screaming.
if you happen to be standing next to the power switch, occasionally you can hear a creepy robotic voice recite out the numbers 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, and 42. These are all a reference to the TV show Lost. Uh, you don't know how popular this show was back in the day. This was before YouTube and Netflix were really like as mainstream as they are today. This show was everywhere and was like the peak of television at its time. And I never watched it, so I don't really get the reference too much. But apparently these numbers are frequently reoccurring and lost and each correspond with one of the final candidates to replace Jacob as the protector of the island. I don't know, I never watched the show. Also around Varuk, you will see a bunch of numbers written in blood. 1, 9, 3, 8, 2, 4, 0, 6, followed by 9, 22. This is a reference to the meteor that fell in Chikora, Pennsylvania on June 24th, 1938, which is also very similar to the Tunguska event, which we constantly see on the walls in various of zombie maps. And also 9, 21, I've seen a lot of people say that this stands for the time that it happened, but... I don't think that's the case. I think it stands for the Bible verse, Jeremiah 921. Death has climbed in through our windows and has entered our fortresses. It has removed the children from the streets and the young men from the public squares. That just fits zombies too perfect for it not to be it. If you happen to be in the power station and you no clip through the wall, you will see this cute little sign with a zombie on it that I feel like just gets missed a lot and it's just really cool. It has nothing to do with anything, but I still think it's pretty cool. There's also a German sign that a lot of people might have seen, but never really gave it any thoughts, which reads, All unattended children will immediately be sold to the circus. And if you happen to be next to the power switch, yet again, you will also see some writing on the wall, which a lot of people might just gloss over at first and never really pay any attention to, which says, Wish too often and your wishing well will run. Which definitely, more than likely refers to the box. If you keep hitting it, eventually it'll just skedaddle and go somewhere else. Now in a couple rooms in Veruk, there are going to be a bunch of writing on the wall in blood. And here's just a snippet of what they contain. Encoded in the Illuminati code, the words Living Dead and OMH935 can be seen. And a bunch of sentences can also be read. Nerve impulses generated by the motoneuron activate the muscle to which the stretch receptor is attached. If within the warming world, showered fall and soften tide, from the pains tomorrow fish, lips be the wary curbside sun, some question, time question. You can also see Hans, one test, Teddy is the biggest liar, what now, I'm not talking to you. You can see tally marks adding up to 140, go away, go away, go away, go away, uh, no, 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 listen here, kill this dumb and kill that not so dumb. And there's also a bunch of images written in blood. You got a teddy bear crossed out, you have a crescent moon, a zombie eating a severed arm, a city with an explosion on it, graves and a skull, birds, an angry man, a foot stepping on a sun. And a lot of these are just constantly pasted over and over and over again in just different sections of the map. Now, if you happen to be in the mood for some tunes, if you come over to the toilet and you flush it three times, you will hear the first ever actual music Easter egg in Call of Duty Zombies history. Now, if you're more of a fan of the creepiness of Verruckt, in various different parts of the map, you can hear train noises, women crying, doors being slammed, people being dragged, people screaming, eerie music, and that's just a tad bit of the overall horrors that this map has. I will leave a link to a full video of all the creepy sounds in Verruckt, but I'll just give you guys a little sneak peek.
heading over to Shinonuma. Downstairs in the main hunt, there's a piece of paper that reads Diglock and Doris, which translates to the bell and the giant. Which, knowing now, we know exactly what all that stuff stands for, but back in the day before Doris had actually come out, this was very, very interesting for its time. If we head over to the doctor's quarters and you come up to this bookshelf and you hold FX, action button, whatever it is, you will hear Rick Toffin's crazed laughter, which also did make a return in Revelations. Yeah! 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 There's also a note right next to the perk machine that reads, might be powering harp, but it comes with a risk. May consider using, and then that's all we got. If you noclip outside of the map and you come to the side of this cabin, you will see some writing on the wall that says the power will destroy us all. Now you've probably seen this poster around and you've always probably wondered, what exactly does it say? Well, the text reads, the arm is attached to the body by the shoulders. Sometimes you can rip them off the body with enough force. And very similar to the arm poster, you've also probably seen this one with the skull on it, which reads, Skull of the Homo Sapien. This is a bony structure that is found in most animals. A lot of people might know about this one. Outside of the map, there's a large chunk of element 115, and when you shoot at it, your character will give you some unique dialogue. I wonder if that rock brought those freak bags. Oh, that rock! Must be the element 115 comes from. I think the Red Menace would be interested in this space rock. This rock is not of this press. If back in the day you happened to be playing Shinonuma on the Call of Duty Zombies app, once you opened up all the areas, a message will appear saying all areas unlocked, now go find the grave, and a shovel would replace the player's knife. And if the player looks hard enough, you can come across Peter's grave, and you can dig up the grave, and the player would be rewarded with a Wonderwolf DG2. It really does seem like they had big ideas for the whole app thing until they, you know, KO'd it and then eventually brought it back. But man, back in the day, they did go above and beyond for it. And speaking of Peter, if you can somehow manage to knock him down from his noose and he goes to the ground and you go up and interact with him, you immediately die and the game is immediately over. Now, similar to Varuk, Chena Numa also has tons of creepy sounds throughout the map. If you come up next to this shed and you listen very, very closely, you can hear a woman crying. <laughs> If you come over here to the fishing hut, you can actually hear a child's nursery rhyme way off in the distance, if you can get past the monkeys hooting and hollering. If you come to the comm rooms next to the radios, through the static and everything, you can kind of faintly hear people asking to be saved. And throughout the entire map, you can hear some faint whispering in the distance. And keeping the themes with music easter eggs, if you come over here to this telephone and you interact with it, the music easter egg, the one, will start playing. And I think it's a very, very underrated song. I'm a huge fan of it. What? Are they gonna put a music easter egg in every map now? Heading over to Doris, if you come near the trench gun, there is a sign on the wall where you can very faintly read the words, Did not resist in Paris. There were lots of hints to a future Paris map in Doris that we unfortunately never got. Heading over to Jug, if you have no zombie near you and you sit down for a while, you can eventually hear the same lullaby that we heard in Shinonuma. The Glock in Doris is forever stuck at 115, and this spawned so many fan theories back in the day about us being stuck in a forever loop, and that's why there's infinite amounts of zombies, and man does this just bring back so many fond memories back in the day when we had no idea what was going on with the story. On the various chalkboards throughout the map, you can see hints to future DLCs, you can see Kino der Toten, Call of the Dead, the elusive Paris map, Ascension, and possibly some hints to other maps. I haven't been able to figure out what's all what on these because... 
Surprise, surprise, they're not the best quality. And also on these same boards with these pictures of the maps, the words the bell is now mobile and follow the entire plan can be read. There are also tons of scatter notes throughout the map. The most infamous one that everybody knows about is the sinking brick one. If you come to the brick over in the Thompson room and you hold F on it, the brick will slide down and a note reading side effects of using 115. The power is undeniable, but who can use such weapons without themselves turning? This is one of the OG original Easter eggs. Also near that very same note, another note near the double barrel shotgun can be read is produced by bombarding an americium 243 nucleus with a calcium 48 nucleus. It then decays after further decay, a metastable isotope is formed. This leads us to believe that transference of matter is indeed possible and even the reanimation of bodies. There's also even more secret Illuminati notes. In Spawn, a note can be seen in the great that when decoded reads, Edward, it's time to kill Maxis. And there is even a larger note that is dated December 23rd, 1944. The header reads, Industry Global Communication Services. The message was from IHCOMFSOG and sent to FSER via IGS mail. The message reads, Faithful servant, observe and report, the seed has been planted, Maxis must not know. Man, they were really pushing the whole Illuminati things back in the day, and you know what? Props to them, I liked it. Also, on the various chalkboards around the map, there's tons of stuff written on them. You have Edward, I know it was you, H, Yena, which stands for Harvey Yena, it's not Hyena. A lot of people gave me shit for that in the last video. Level 5 through 8, must survive, which could be a hint to doggy rounds. Never again, Sam. Gravity Potential Model 647, Heavy High K Dielectric, 011-235-813-21-33 and 55. This is a Fibonacci number used in the Golden Ratio, the theory for time travel. Yeah, that one also went over my head. I'm way too stupid for that. V equals Delta X slash Delta T. And this is the acceleration equation, derivative of velocity chains in position over time. So this is basically like just notes for time travel. You can also read Treyarch and Illuminati. Experiment 935 was successful. The words Black Sun in German can also be read. Delgado, Haas Delgado from Billy and Mandy. Why is wrong? Why won't it work? Help. Tomorrow the project will move into full production. 114 UUQ, 115 UUP. Equation combining calcium, americium, and a uranium resulting in the version of element 115, energy momentum, and just tons of energy equations. There's also a lot of pictures on these chalkboards. You got electrons and protons swapping, a wave frequency model, an electrical circuit, a circuit almost identical to a Tesla coil, a Schapler, oh, I'm going to butcher that, device diagram uh, works on the concept of an ether force for like anti-gravity stuff, the Vril 1 a UFO design, that was interesting, and various of other little doodles. So these chalkboards, if you actually like take your time and break it down and look through all of it, have plenty of interesting stuff. Not too much like zombie storyline information, but more like science behind the storyline, if that makes any sense. There's also various posters detailing medical experiments with references to element 115, reanimation of dead corpses, brain scans, and Dr. Kurt Blome's name. And another little Easter egg that a lot of people might not know about, on the wall in various locations on the map, the words JD can be seen, which stands for JD2020, who was the community manager for Call of Duty back in the day. Near Teleporter B, you can see a newspaper on the bulletin board that reads, The Bees Disappeared from Ludensworth. And around the map, you can find two instances of Group 935's Field Operations Manual. One right here in this little AC vent thing next to Double Tap, and another one outside of the map. And it reads, It is the responsibility of absolute secrecy. No one is to know what you do, where you work, what our research has uncovered, or what our purpose will be. You will have no further contact with your governments or your families. Your decision to fully dedicate your lives to Group 935 is obsolete. Attached is your field operations manual, which will direct you should our mission get compromised. We cannot afford to let this power fall into the wrong hands. And therefore, the field operation manual should be considered your Bible. Make your preparations now. A new dawn is beginning for mankind. Dr. L. Maxis, in the event of critical failure, you are instructed to take your cyanide tablet that's included in your field operations kit. In the event you misplace yours, there are several methods that will accomplish the same task. For example, the last, and then that's where it cuts off. Now let's swap it up a little bit. If you are around the furnace and things get eerily quiet, you can hear a female sobbing in the background.
Now everybody knows about going prone in front of a perk and getting some free points, but did you know in Darice, if you go prone in front of double tap, it will claim that you get 25 points, but in actuality, you get 30. You get five extra points because that last number will always be zero and will never be a five in World of War. So you can thank Treyarch for being very, very generous and giving you a whole five extra points. We have some more ciphers and stuff in spawn in this barrier if you look all the way down here you can see some writing on the wall which translates to a living dead and there is also another little cipher over here next to teleporter b that reads help now a lot of people might know this but a lot of old school zombies used to be based off of real things that happened back in world war ii and durice is no exception Project Reese, or The Giant, was a codename for a construction project of Nazi Germany between 1943 and 1945, and unlike the Reese and the video games, this one consisted of seven underground structures in the Owl Mountains, which at the time was in Nazi Germany, but today it is now in Poland. And allegedly this is where they did all of their scientific research for their secret Wonderwaff program. And one of them was allegedly Die Glock, aka The Bell, which was supposedly an anti-gravity machine that looked like a flying saucer and was used in conjunction with an above ground structure known as the Henge, and the Henge is the flytrap easter egg that you see in Doris. The bell was described as a saucer shaped device made from hard heavy metal that was filled with a substance similar to mercury and required enormous amount of electrical power for testing. And like I said, the bell was alleged some sort of anti-gravity slash time machine for the Nazis. And the theory goes kind of like this, the scientists and technicians who worked on the bell who did not die of its effects were wiped out by the SS towards the end of the war, and the device was moved to an unknown location. And there's also a theory that the SS official Hans Kammler, I hope that's how you pronounce it, later secretly traded this technology to the US in exchange for his freedom, which does fall in line with a lot of zombies lore, so Treyarch really did their research. And the concrete ring, aka the Henge, aka the flytrap easter egg, built in 1943 and 44, was supposedly used as a launch pad for the bell but other people seem to claim that it was merely just the structure for an ordinary industrial cooling tower but i like the uh nazi occultism a little bit more so the real life Doris is very very fascinating nazi occultism as a whole is extremely interesting but speaking of the henge and the flytrap easter egg if you come over to this section of the map and you have an upgraded weapon and you shoot a control panel located on the hinge you will have officially started the first ever main easter egg in call of duty zombies history and if you go around the map and find three teddy bears and you shoot them you will get some unique samantha dialogue Also, if you come up to these glasses full of red liquid and you hold down the F button or X button, whatever you're playing on, your character will grunt. <sighs> and back in the day, man, this spawned so many theories about you getting upgraded jug, you getting upgraded grenades, something being better. It doesn't do anything but, but that. But man, back in the day, people would tell you some of the craziest things. If you happen to have a sniper and you take a look at the moon, you will see some traces of 115 on the moon. Now, nowadays, we can assume that this was Griffin Station because Black Ops 1 moon. But back in the day, I don't think they were thinking that far ahead because moon was supposed to be pear. So they could have just said that, hey, 115 is located on the moon. If you happen to be chilling all the way in the back of the map near this teleporter and you happen to look down here, you will see Dr. Maxis's nameplate next to a bloody paw print. And if you happen to be near teleporter B and you look out here, you can see a hanging man, but actually coming up to the hanging man will reveal that it's only the lower part and a rope. There is not much else to it. And if you throw a grenade at it or some kind of explosion at it, he will fling randomly around, which is pretty entertaining. If you happen to have some monkey bombs and you are near the furnace and you toss a monkey bomb in, you will hear some terrifying monkey screaming followed by a quote from Samantha. Also around each teleporter there is going to be a wooden plank with the abbreviations for France, Germany, and England written on them. 
And if you happen to be no clipping outside of the map, you can actually come to the location where it takes you when you are teleporting. So when you teleport, you come to this location and there are four places for each of the players. So when you're teleporting, you get sent to this location of the map where your body stays for a second until eventually it takes you back to the mainframe. There are two signs written in sandbags on top of the roofs and one of them reads SOS while the other one reads help. It means literally nothing, but I still think it's pretty interesting. The music easter egg Beauty of Annihilation can be activated by hitting three glowing jars around the map. Two of them are in the animal testing lab and one of them is located near Teleporter B. So that's going to be the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you guys did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. If we can get 4,000 likes, I will definitely do another for Black Ops 1. So that's it. Leave.